Welcome to the Rich Life Realization. This is episode number two, and we have a special guest on the Rich Life Realization podcast. Her name is Holly Lasko, and she is a phenomenal coach. I got to meet her in Mind Valley when we were doing the coaching program together. And she is working right now on creating a community of activist entrepreneurs. So she, we're going to talk a little bit about that and see whatever else the heck we want to talk about and, and have a little bit of fun. Thank you for joining for episode number two. And, and thank you, Holly, for being on the Rich Life Realization podcast. Thanks, so Rich. <laughs> Thank you. It's honestly so great to be here. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Mm. So tell us a little bit more about entrepreneurial activism. And there was a certain word that you used when we were having our conversation before this started. It was super, super empowerment. I loved that. <laughs> what is, what does being super empowered mean to you? And how does that connect with, with entrepreneurial activism? So where do I begin? I mean, I suppose when I speak about empowerment, it's really about healing. Mm. And after two years of focusing very heavily on my own healing, which I would also describe as personal growth, I actually think personal growth and healing are the same thing. Um, I would say that that's where empowerment really lies. Um, I think it's really about stepping into our true selves, which also means stepping into what I call our ideal selves. Um, and it's about understanding what we want to experience in this life, how we want to grow in this life, and ultimately how we want to contribute. And I think the contribution aspect of that is super powerful. I think that real empowerment really comes from believing in something powerful outside of ourselves. Um, it's about wanting to step into our ideal selves by also being of service to others. Um, I think that there are a lot of crises in the world right now. And I don't mean that in a doom and gloom sense. I just mean that there is so much potential for contribution, mm -hmm. um, whether it's environmental issues, whether it's social injustice. I really want to work with people who want to contribute to the world in being of service to others and also being of service to social environmental problems or the solutions to, to social environmental problems. Hmm. And, and you also talk about how activism doesn't just have to have that definition of like activists for a specific cause, although it can, and that's what you want to help other people with, but you have a, a broader definition of, of activism, activism. Yeah. So the, Existing definition of activism is really all about campaigning for social and political change. Mm. And while I wouldn't change that definition at all, I think that's definitely what activism is. I think it's also time in the context of today to include our behavior in that, to include actually being active and taking action in what activism is. I think it's so easy for so many people to ignore 
problems, problems with themselves, problems outside of themselves. Um, and ultimately, ultimately, this leads to disillusionment, it leads to disconnection. Um, and I think that that for me is really what healing means as well. It's about becoming active, it's about taking action. It's about stopping that complacency, that kind of ignoring everything that's happening and really going, wow, okay, there are problems and I'm gonna find solutions to them. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, activism is not only about campaigning for social and political change, it's also about becoming active. It's about bringing activism home to how we act, to changing our behavior, to transforming ourselves, to using or harnessing the power of social media as well, um, where we are all campaigning ultimately. You know, even when you run ads on social media, they're even called campaigns. So, I think it's important to expand the definition of activism to actually include our actions and tra that transformation of behavior, which is really what life coaching is about, I think. And the, it, it seems to me that there's one of the biggest issues and one that you kind of touched on there was that people have a belief that complacency where they don't I, I don't think they're really complacent. I think that they don't truly believe that they can make a difference. And uh, we have so much more influence and power. And when we create from our inner spirit what we would like to see in the world... there's a transformation that occurs and an energy that occurs and it can change the world. We're, we're limiting ourselves if we don't believe in the impact that we can create. I totally agree with that. And I think the rich, the rich life realization way of putting this is that we all have this creative genius. And I'm really with you on this. Like I truly believe that we do all have a creative genius and that capacity for creative genius is, is within each of us. And it's about telling stories as well. It's about becoming authors of our own story. Mm -hmm. I think in my experience anyway, kind of mental illness, anxiety, depression, it's really rooted in not feeling like we're writing our own life story. I think that, you know, when we become anxious and depressed, it's often because we feel disempowered. We feel like somebody else is writing our story for us. We don't have that authorship over our lives. We don't have that authorship over things that are going on in the world. We don't feel like we're making a difference. We don't feel like we're making an impact. So, I really agree with you there, yeah. I think a lot of it has to do with stepping into that creative part of ourselves that in a lot of ways society has told us we don't really need. Mm -hmm. Because we get so, so many messages that we need this in order to be happy. We need the, the newest car in order to be happy or or heck a hamburger or something like that. And that's what's going to create the connection. We get those messages every single day. And when we're trying to feed that, that desire from connection from the outside, instead of from, from what we really want and what we really want to see change in the world, it's a missed opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think what you said before as well, I think what you touched upon is that element of choice. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, you, you mentioned that you think that people maybe don't feel like they can make a difference. And I think it's really about presenting people with that, with that choice. 
you know, by not presenting them, but actually reminding people that we all have a choice. We can choose how to spend our time. We can choose what we want to create. We don't have to do what people are telling us to do. We don't have to li live a life that we've been told that we should live. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of like the, you mentioned the, the metaphor of the story where it's it's like that story that we we've really been told mm. and a lot of people have been the authors of the story so far and then that choice that you're talking about is you can change the ending of your story by becoming more of your own author mm. that yeah. authorial presence <laughs> in your own life. Absolutely. I think that's what creativity is as well. And I think, you know, it's easy. I think some people fall into the trap of thinking that they're not creative when actually creativity is like fundamental to the human experience. I actually think that's what makes us human. It's what distinguishes us from just being, which is what other beings are. You know, when we when we consider animals and plants, they they have their own type of intelligence. But to us, from our perspective, they just are. Whereas we have the ability, it seems, to actually create in this in this sort of different way. And I think that being disconnected from that ability to create or that, as you would call it, the creative genius mm. is really the root of a lot of suffering, a lot of pain, a lot of confusion. This, this really reminds me a lot of when I was going through some of my challenges. And it was really one of the things that helped me move forward was creating the business, was creating the, the business that I created. And that allowed me to come forward and it almost drew me out of it in, in some way, in a, in a healing way. And this is, this is kind of an interesting piece. Maybe, maybe we can go with this. Maybe this is not going to be, we'll, we'll explore. Like, it reminds me you talked of the way that you talk about healing is super powerful and it's kind of like uh when we get a cut and you create new cells to cover it you don't use old cells in order to heal your body is healing itself and it's creating new cells and that can be a part of uh, the way that we're guided forward. Anything there for you, Holly? Mm. I think what's coming up for me as well is that, and I hadn't really thought of it like this before, but mm -hmm. entrepreneurs are probably what we humans would call the most successful people in the world mm. and what is that success like what actually really is it I think actually thinking about it now it's 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 their ability to create you know what distinguishes an entrepreneur from somebody who's employed well they're doing something they're right they're out there on their own creating their own thing they're solving problems um and I love how this is all coming together now in this conversation as well, because the entrepreneurship part of what I'm doing is really important to me. It's I, I, I truly believe that in order to really empower people who want to make a change or to transform the world in the way that it needs to transform, there needs to be financial empowerment as well as other types of empowerment. And I think in healing, it's quite easy to sideline financial aspects and a lot of people, they, they feel quite uncomfortable about talking about money. They feel quite uncomfortable about kind of considering the power of money. You know, it can, it can be easily considered this kind of 
evil thing or this difficult thing or this thing that you know you don't really need it's not what makes you happy when actually you know when when somebody has financial freedom they can do they can do whatever they like really you know the power in that the amount of time that it that it, that it frees up the amount of opportunity um being able to invest in things you know being able to invest in like practices and projects and people who are really making a difference in the world this is extremely powerful so i think you know the creativity aspect of all of this is really really important and i think that bringing activism together with this creative genius that you speak about and the entrepreneurship element as well is yeah i think it's super powerful and there's really there's something here it has capacity to really make a difference in the world hmm. that and I, I love that you talk about the power of of finance and money because it's it's seen through that light of being the root money is the root of all evil and that's just a thought that we're putting on money it's really it's just a tool and money can be used for incredible activism it can be used for fundraising we can use the money as a tool to leverage the change that we want to see in the world exactly and that is one of the experiences that we can have when we have that financial abundance is that we create the ripple effects around us like you talked about earlier mm. and it it allows us to to give uh one of the things that i wanted to do was and this came up this weekend i've always wanted to do this but i i now know i'm gonna do a fundraiser so I don't know what that's going to look like. We're going to, because I'm going to explore that. But that's that freedom with that entrepreneurial spirit, that creativity is that we can start to affect the world and, and give in ways that we never thought possible before. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I love that idea. I'd love to hear more about that at some point. <laughs> Um, but I absolutely, I mean, I think, you know, one of, one of the problems really in the world today is that the money is kind of in the wrong places, mm. you know, there's so much money being spent on defense, um, bombs, guns, you know, I don't want to go into this, go down this route really in the conversation, but you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think by seeing money as evil, we're not really solving any problem. We're actually just making it worse. You know, we're, we become part of the problem if we see money in that way, because actually that's, it's a perspective. It's really just a matter of perspective. And when we see how much power that money being spent in the right way can have, you mm -hmm. know, it can, it can heal, it can, solve uh, poverty it, it can bring exact bring people out of poverty it can fund incredible projects it can bring new technology to people who need it it can you know there's endless possibilities of what money being spent in the right places can do so i think it's important to bring to really place emphasis on the financial aspect of this as well, especially when we're talking about healing. Hmm. Something that came up for me just now is that money is a lot like, it's a lot like paint. So <laughs> you can use paint in different ways to create a, a masterpiece you can use it to create something silly you can use it to create something that's beautiful or or quite ugly mm -hmm. 
And so it's it's this it's really an energy that we can utilize. And everything that we're we're placing value judgments on it is coming from us. And that it's just this this energy of exchange because there's so much beautiful exchange that's happening in the world. Mm. And money is just the facilitator of that. Like, think about like not just the activism, but the the exchanges that people are having on where they get to create something and then somebody can buy that. Yeah. Absolutely. It's an exchange of energy. Yeah. And we need to funnel that energy into the into the right places, into yeah. into healing and solving problems. Yeah. So it matters to me greatly that that I am of service to people, the right people, um, people who want to become financially abundant so that they can heal themselves and come up with solutions for problems that they care about. Mm. Yeah. There, there's also an element that we, we might want to hit on that you, you don't have to wait and that financial abundance is more that really abundance in general is is more of a mindset Mm, yeah and and that we we can give in other ways even if we don't have money we can we can create activism in other ways that can affect the world and other people can bring in that energy and so there's a space of, of not waiting until, oh, well, I'm going to give when I'm financially abundant. You can still give now in small amounts of your energy that is money. Mm. And you can also give in your time, in your caring, in your love. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. What if what if activism was was more of an act of of giving hmm. of yourself? Mm. Yeah. I mean, I my understanding of activism is that it's not only about the existing definition of activism, which is about facilitating or campaigning for social and political change Mm. it's about bringing activism home to our behavior to how we act it's about that ripple effect of personal growth and personal development which is also healing it's about all of us healing ourselves and then encouraging others to do the same um and i get the impression that's kind of what you're getting at there as well i think it's very much about our behavior yeah there there's always that quote that's very famous the be the change that you want to see in the world mm it was gandhi wasn't it it's a gandhi yeah. quote yeah 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 and re- really being is part of that that healing because if we're if we're being you know grumpy and not not that you know that naturally happens sometimes but if we're coming to the world in these states where we're creating and we're really we're coming from our own fear in a lot of ways when we're not mm. healed when we're not in that space we mm. we dip in and out of it 
And so part of that mandate is to give the world your best self. Mm. Yeah. Through your act of healing, through your growth, through your transformation, through insight, through understanding. Mm. Yeah. This is ultimately why I think a coaching community mm. of activists and specifically activist entrepreneurs could be so powerful. Because I think when we elevate activism to be not just about campaigning for social and political change, but also about bringing activism home to how we act and how we behave, that's really about coaching. And the power of community, you know, in all facilitating, helping facilitate that change within each other. I th just think it's super powerful. Mm. And then to elevate it even further through the entrepreneurship aspect of it, actually encourage people to start up businesses to catapult their activism. Just sort of elevating it even higher as well. So for me, this is this is this is very much me and what I'm doing and what I'm very set on on facilitating. It sounds like you have kind of a triad, like a coaching community, and then oh oh gosh, let me see, I I missed one maybe, activism and then entrepreneurship. So maybe it's activism, entrepreneurship, and community, mm. and coaching is is your way of helping guide that yeah yeah well the coaching is the coaching kind of encapsulates all of it really yeah. i think yeah. yeah because the coaching is the growth and the development and the healing yeah and, and the, that community aspect of it is so important because when we connect with other people on a deeper level, especially people that have all of these incredible ideas, people who are wanting some of the same things that we're wanting to see in the world, to see the same changes, we start to believe in the possibility of it. Yeah. Like we talked about it the closer to the beginning. And it becomes real in our lives because those people inspire you. You are like, oh my gosh, what are they doing? Mm. What could I do? I bet mm. I could do that exact same thing or I could do it in my own special way. Mm. and bringing that gift into the world mm, absolutely yeah absolutely yeah and I think you know to me it's important that this community that I'm building is it's really about intersectional activism as well it's about bringing people who are campaigning in their own ways for change around lots and lots of different or across lots and lots of different types of change and bringing them all together um, because really there's just I see healing as this kind of overarching theme and there are so many different types of healing that the world needs to see mm. and when we're all empowering each other and supporting each other in our own journeys which are all kind of connected you know social justice is environmental justice for example in so many ways there are people living in certain areas of the world who are disproportionately affected by environmental crises because of who they are and because of where they live for example so I think having all these isolated movements as well which is kind of how it's been for quite a long time you know activism has kind of historically been about having a cause that you're kind of fighting for and you kind of have 
you're just focusing on that on that cause mm -hmm. but I think actually expanding that to be part of a community of just activists who are all fighting for change generally and supporting people outside of perhaps your specific kind of cause could just be super powerful and as you say it's that kind of ripple effect isn't it of kind of like encouraging each other seeing being empowered by somebody else's progress and seeing somebody else succeed is is what it's about isn't it so yeah it, it gives you that belief And also there's a, there's certain principles of ways of transformation that are going to be effective in all elements of activi activism. Mm. And so when we, when we work together, we can discover what's, what's working and it's almost like an exploration or an experiment. Mm -hmm. And when we do it with other people, that's when the real magic takes off when, when you're combining it in these incredible ways. Mm. That's what changes the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, I don't know about you, but when I think of myself as a as a sort of microcosm, it really makes sense because, you know, the last two years I've transitioned to a vegan diet mm. and I've done that because I part of my healing was to reeducate myself, which basically meant ignorance not being bliss for me anymore, you know, really waking up and understanding what it is I'm consuming on a day-to-day -day basis, where it's come from, what pain and suffering might have gone into producing what are the things that I'm consuming, being aware, being conscious, being awake, you know, it means caring about more than one thing or more than a few things. It means, it means caring just generally, you know, about important things. So there's sort of like, I've transferred to a vegan diet. I'm really, uh, caring about helping people re-educate themselves and also re-educating people in kind of consciousness quantum science as well you know it's going to take activism for people to understand the power of quantum biology which is actually quite a new field um, and that's really a lot of the theoretical basis for healing true healing in the way that we're talking about it's going to take activism. There are some incredible scientists, mainly in the US, who are campaigning tire tirelessly every day on social media to educate people on this really important knowledge. Um, I mean, these are just two examples, but there are so many things that I care about and I wouldn't be able to just focus on one thing and say, this is what I care about, it's everything. So, and I'm sure that if I was part of a community of activists or of people who are all caring about making change in some way that I'd be inspired in ways that I haven't even comprehended right now as well you know there would be things that I haven't considered ever and I think oh my goodness of course I care about that why have I not why was I not even conscious of that and I'm sure I'd be very grateful to them to raising my awareness of that issue so I think that when we just see see this really as like inspiration you know it's a way to inspire each other to be our ideal selves and to be conscious and aware super powerful i think yeah and it reminds me of a quote i think i'm gonna butcher it though i think it's a mother Teresa quote where she says once you know better, do better. Mm. And familiar. there's, I think in a lot of ways, there's so much, so much fear that is stopping people from, from doing better. Familiar. And 
and pain. Mm. And both mental and physical. Mm. And the, the more that we grow and heal, the more energy we're going to have for exploring ways that we can affect the world in Mm -hmm. positive, amazing ways. Absolutely. Yeah. And you just, you just triggered a rich realization within me, (laughs) which is actually that there are lots of people in my life, for example, who I know deeply care about things deep down. They really care, (sighs) but I know that they just feel like they don't have the energy and they don't have the time to really be focusing on things outside of their immediate reality. Um, Things seem too exhausting, too overwhelming to even consider and to think about. And I know that I was there a couple of years ago before I really started healing myself. Um, So I think that's why when it comes to activism, it's super powerful for it to begin with ourselves. It's to begin with that self transformation, which can start slowly as well. It can begin with just five minutes every day, consistently making some kind of change in our behavior, bit by bit, slowly but surely, you know, and five minutes a day, if that's all that we're really kind of encouraging people to do, A, it's realistic, and B, like on a long-term basis, if everybody were to put five minutes a day into changing their behavior in some way, you know, replacing a bad habit with a healthy one, re-educating themselves about something, reading one chapter of a book, maybe longer than five minutes a day, but you know what I mean? Like that's slowly but surely we get that consistency going. Mm -hmm. And as you you suggest, uh, suddenly people uh, have the time, they have the kind of mental freedom and the capacity to start caring about things or to, obviously they already care, but to, to realize that care properly and to actually put you know to uh, take action and the taking action is the activism to me I think it's important that we redefine that activism as literally taking action making changes yeah okay (laughs) here is a maybe it's an activism challenge Because I think that also when people not only focus on their healing, but also start to focus on the the activism, the change they want to see in the world, that can draw them out of toward that healing Mm. in powerful ways like it happened for me. And so spend here, here's maybe this is, this could be the challenge and, uh, Holly, you can steal this. You are welcome to (laughs) people love challenges. (laughs) <laughs> uh, we'll start with three minutes because two minutes seems a little bit silly to do something five minutes is like oh that might be too long three minutes and I think you'll find you're going to spend a lot longer but spend three minutes starting that activism process that entrepreneurial process and just start exploring, see what happens, build that consistency, like you talked about, Holly. And I think if we all start to do that, what the heck would happen? It would. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. It would bring about. so much transformation and and create not just ripples but freaking waves tsunamis <laughs> of change yeah absolutely five minute challenge or three minute challenge mm-hmm. well any final thoughts holly <laughs> well i think you know my I'm kind of taking a phased approach to building this community, but ultimately I see it being 
it's a coaching community, but it's also going to include courses as well that people can dip in and out of a bit like the mind valley format but instead of it just being about kind of like the self transformation um in terms of kind of meditation and consciousness and self awareness which is really what mind valley is about it's about expanding that and also including re education in there as well like actually encouraging people to learn about things that maybe society has led them to believe they don't need to learn about or things that aren't Im important as well so my activism is not only going to be providing kind of coaching services to people but it's also once i have the financial freedom and the time freedom is going to be to create a non-profit re-education platform and i want to make it global um, and I want to include teachers and practitioners from so many different disciplines all around the world, all trying, all facilitating change and all kind of um, full of knowledge that, as I say, people maybe haven't considered as important before, but can really facilitate that transformation and that healing. Mm. You know, for example, sacred geometry. It's incredible. Understanding sacred geometry is like magic. Um, quantum biology, again, like that really is true healing. It's self-healing. It's free healing. You know, you don't go to the pharmacy and buy pills. Like it's about learning how to harness the natural world and to heal from the natural world. And it's, you know, there's data, there's empirical data to back this up now, back this up with now. <laughs> um, so having courses as well, I think that people can actually dip in and out of and for it to be nonprofit and free. This is my this is my dream that I'm determined to make reality. But obviously, I need to practice what I preach <laughs> and kind of create that financial and time and location freedom for myself first so that I can actually devote all of my time to creating this platform. And I think that's where. I personally would like to end our talk <laughs> today. Um, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. I, I don't know if I've told you this, that I have a adopt a mission program. And so your mission is now my mission and, and I'm here to help you in any way you can. And thank you for being on today. If people are interested in that community, what's the best way that they can connect with you? Honestly, at this point, just having conversations with people is mm -hmm. really where I'm at. Um, so please, please just get in touch with me. Um, I would be so, so over the moon to have conversations with anybody who this resonates with. I think it's really important to start talking about this. Um, and ultimately, like, this is going to be a community effort, you know? Like, I'm intent on leading this community, but it, the power of the community is going to what is really going to make this reality. So if anybody is listening to this, if you, you know, if, if, if this, as I say, resonates with you, please do get in touch. And thank you, Rich, as well. Thank you. <laughs> You'll be a great partner in crime. <laughs> the best. <laughs> Sidekick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so they're going to reach out to you if this resonates with them. What's your preferred method of communication? I have a Facebook page. I have an Instagram um, my Instagram is Holly Lasko, so that's H O L L Y L A S K O with an underscore. Um, my Facebook is Holly Lasko, which is the name as I just spelt it with coach at the end. Um, and yeah, I think that's probably best because everyone's on social media these days. Um, but we could also put my details maybe when we upload this. As yeah, well. so I'll put it can, in the, the course notes as well. Yeah. Yeah, so that you guys can see. Um, but yeah, please do just just message me. 
even just with the word interested if you don't know how to start conversation and i'll will happily i'll happily get in touch <laughs> that's what it's all about is, is starting the conversation and, and inviting people to the conversation and you Absolutely. you all are invited to the conversation exactly it's all about the conversation mm -hmm. inspiring each other and yeah mm -hmm. making this reality mm -hmm. thank you again holly and appreciate you and may your coaching may your environmental activism be planted as that seed and sprout and grow like wildfire, like shoot up like bamboo. Thank you, Rich. Thank you so much, honestly. It's a pleasure being here. Yeah. A real honor, actually, to be here. <laughs> Thanks again. Mm. <laughs> well, and there. Thanks for joining us on the Rich Life podcast. And may you have a blessed rest of your day life year all of the above <laughs> thank you thank you very much <laughs>